Hi there, this is Reza and welcome to another Unreal Engine tutorial. In this step-by-step -step guide, I will delve into the process of retargeting animation within Unreal Engine version 5.3 and 5.4. Initially, we will explore the entire workflow, highlighting all the do's and don'ts specific to version 5.3, then we will leverage this knowledge and seamlessly apply the same techniques in Unreal Engine 5.4. This ensures you're equipped to transfer animation between characters irrespective of the version you're working with. Additionally, if you prefer to focus solely on one version, timestamps are provided in the video. We have a lot to go through, so let's get started. Let's start with Unreal Engine 5.3 and create a new project. All right, I'm going to start with a blank scene. Let's call this one IK retargeting. Select content starter content pack, ray tracing, enable and disable if need be. We're not going to really render anything or we're not using anything from starter content. So totally up to you. I'm going to go ahead and create our project. Here I am inside Unreal Engine. Now we need to do two things. Uh, there are mainly prerequisites. The first one is to pay a visit to plugin and enable animation warping. Make sure this plugin is enabled and it allows you to do animation and pose warping. So we need to have that in place. I am going to restart. one down another one to go the second prerequisite is to have two different bipedal characters we would like to transfer animation from one character to another so naturally we need two characters now the first character that i'm going to use is more of a standard character and you can use any type of character with mocap information I am going to choose what Unreal in Engine has to offer. So let's bring up Unreal and I'm going to go to Mannequin Pack. This is free, available to be downloaded via Epic Games Marketplace. So all you need to do is just to go add to project and go add to your project and it will get added to the project. So that's one character. The second character can be also from Marketplace. You can bring Manny on Real Engine 4 and it comes with a lot of mocaps. You can use ready to go characters, but the second one I would like that to be a static. So this one already comes with few acts, few animations with it, and that's why I'm going to bring this as my source. We need a rigid character as our secondary or target um, mesh for that i can simply use maximo but rest assured you can use your own characters i'm going to go into character and um, as you can see if i show you where i found this character i'm going to go in here and you can see ortiz is the name of the character. I'm going to select that as my mesh for my target mesh. Obviously that needs to have a rig with it. So I can go into animation and just simply look for a T-pose. You can see T-pose comes in. I double click. I'm going to select the T-pose simply because I want this um, character to be static, not moving at all. The animation comes from the mannequin to this character right here. I'm going to go download. I want that to be with skin because I would like to get the rig as well. 
and that's how we retarget animation from one rig to another. And I'm going to save it inside the contents folder in my project directory. You can see it's done. I can bring the project folder directory inside content. Um, I can have, we actually have a control rig where we have the mannequin. I can actually create a folder here. All right, we have two characters. Let's review again. So under control rig characters, we have the mannequin. Inside the mannequin, we have meshes. And you can see we have a few skeletons. Quinn, Manny, Manny Simple, and Queen Simple. If I go into Manny, you can see that the rig is somewhat complex, and that may take a bit of time for us to retarget. The workflow stays exactly the same. We just want to save a little bit of time in the tutorial. Now, you can see right off the bat, we're not seeing anything because by default, the bones are hidden. So I'm going to go into character, I'm going to go into bones, and I'm going to say, please show all the hierarchy. And you can see there are many supporting bones here and there for the chest, lower chest, and the amount of twist controls on the rig is uh, way more than the simple ones. Whereas if I go ahead and bring the simple Manny, you can see the uh, supporting bones are, are not here compared to this one and it's a lot easier for us to set up a basic retargeting scenario. So that's the one that I'm going to pick as my source for retargeting. Let's go and check out our Ortiz. Now we don't have anything here because we didn't add it to the project. We saved it as a file so we need to import it. So I'm going to go into control rig characters. I know for a fact that I saved it here. There you go. Typos. And we don't have any animation necessarily. So I don't need to bring in the animation. We would like to bring the skeletal mesh. That is very important. We would like to bring import mesh. That is quite important as well. I'm going to go import all. That should bring all the textures, the geometry and the skeleton. There we go. We have the uh, textures we have the material, we have the skeleton, so on and so forth. So if I look at this skeleton and compare it with the other skeleton, you can see that it's quite different. And that is another thing that you need to be mindful of. If you ask me, both characters should have different skeletal assets and bones hierarchies. Um, so you can kind of maximize the rationale for retargeting this way. Otherwise, it may be better to use compatible skeleton method if characters have exactly the same properties and hierarchies. It would be a lot faster. So keep that in mind. If you've got two identical rigs, this may be a bit of overkill. Next is to create source and target IK rig setup. What does that mean? That means we need to create an IK rig for each of the characters being used in the retargeting process. Let's start with the mannequin. So I'm going to go into characters, switch to mannequin, go into the mesh folder or meshes folder. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go into animation and all the way down into retargeting IK rig. Let's name that Manny underscore IK rig. Now this window asks for the skeletal mesh. So we already know where the skeletal mesh for Manny is. Remember, we agreed upon Manny Simple. So I'm just going to drag and drop it in here. And there we have Manny Simple. Now it talks about um, where and how you would like to target your hierarchy. How would you like to map these bones to 
the T pose of this character. Let's go ahead and create that for the other character as well. I'm going to go into Ortiz and again the same method, retargeting IK rig. And in this one, I'm going to say Ortiz underscore IK rig. I'm going to open that up. And again, we know that it's going to look for the mesh or the skeletal mesh. So we know where that is, this T pose right here, drag and drop. And if I now dock that, we can see that we have the same page for both characters. Again, this is um, quite necessary for us to link a particular bone from one character to another character. All right, let's see how we can make that work. In the previous versions of Unreal, uh, it was actually very tedious. It was bone by bone mapping system. Whereas in Unreal Engine 5.3 and higher, it's actually a chain based mapping. So instead of mapping shoulder one to shoulder one and forearm one to forearm one, we're probably going to do arm to arm because each arm contains a series of bones and Unreal Engine is smart enough to know how to map each bone within the chain that we are going to introduce. The first step is to introduce the pelvis or the root bone. Now, if I zoom in, you can see if I click here, we have the pelvis root mainly is the entire hierarchy. And I see that common mistake amongst students when they want to retarget the root, they actually select the name root, whereas the root is actually the entire hierarchy with all those twist bones and all those IK bones and the central mover bone. And these are the bones that we really don't need. Many of them are not even here. So remember, uh, especially for standard rigs, usually the root bone is pelvis. Now you have two ways of retargeting your bones. The first way is to go in here and add a new chain. And you can say, all right, I'm going to create a new chain and I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to give the other character the exact same name. And I will make sure that these bones are included within this container. Now that's more or less similar to how Unreal Engine used to retarget the bones. The easier way in the newer versions is to just simply right click. This is the first step we're retargeting the root. So uh, as I said, the root is going to be the pelvis. So I'm just going to retarget the root. I'm going to go into Ortiz and select its root. Now it doesn't have any pelvis, your character might have a root which is going to encompass the entire character and a pelvis. For this guy right here, the root and pelvis are pretty much the same bone. It's a very, very simple rig. So I'm just going to right click on it and set retarget root and save for this one as well. Now we retargeted the root, you can see in here it shows up, retarget root is now pelvis for Ortiz also retarget root is hips based on the naming convention that has been used from Mixamo. Now it's a, it's a good time once we get the retargeting root out of the way is to actually go ahead and uh, retarget the chains. If you're a motion builder or a Maya person, the process is very similar to characterizing your rig. Uh, so let's see how it works in action. So what we're targeting is spine, left arm, right arm, neck, head, left leg, and right leg. And anything else that you see in the list, 
you can simply ignore. All right, starting from the top, we have five spine bones. Now, as I said, unlike mapping one to one, we can put all of them into one category. So with all five spine bones selected, I'm going to right click. I'm going to go all the way into new retarget chain. You can see the chain name is spine start bone one end bone five and goal set to none we are not going to use goal this tutorial it gives you extra level of control over ik handles and ik behavior for your character but at the same time you need to introduce solvers and the scope might get a little bit out of control it's not going to cut any corners with what we're about to do so we are going to keep this clean for now so add chain and goal that's the one that we are not going to use we're going to use add chain and as soon as i do that in ik retargeting panel you can see the same information is showing chain name start bone end bone and ik goal none at any point of time if you change your mind and if you make a mistake you can always delete Let's go ahead and do the rest. We've got neck one and neck two, and that's the best part of this newer workflow where I don't really need to type in the name um, as opposed to the old method. Unreal Engine is really smart enough to predict what the name is about. All you need to do is to monitor and check and make sure the name makes sense. Remember, whatever you use here, you need to use the same thing for the other character. I'm going to sort of take it slow and explain the process for the first one and the second one. And then I'm going to push the pedal and pretty much it's repetition, do the rest for the entire chain. So I'm going to go neck, add chain, and it's going to add two neck bones that we have. The head bone is only one, and that's one big difference between this rig and this rig, because it is a typical head bone on top of the head, and you can see the head bone in here is kind of more like a neck bone, but um, we still call that a head bone here, because if I zoom in, we have two more bones, this one right here and this one right here. So we call these two neck and this one is going to be head. So I'm going to select that, right click, near retarget, head, at chain. Uh, we've got clavicle, arm, arm, and then we have a lower arm, twist, TW, if I go in here. You can see these are the twist bones. We don't really need to include any of these. As I said, we want to keep it clean. Um, any redundant extra nodes, we really don't want to include. There is a really um, clean, neat guide in Unreal Engine documentation. Uh, let's see if I can bring it up so we both can take a look at it. There it is. So this is simply just a suggestion that you can potentially put leg, hip, thigh, calf, knee, foot, ankle, and toe in a leg. And Unreal Engine is smart enough to figure out how to map that. Arm, clavicle, shoulder, elbow, wrist, and hand can be in arm, but for fingers, it's going to be separate so thumb separate index middle ring pinky and of course with root this is the first one that we do even with tail for creatures if you have you can also have both of them into one retargeting group same with the jaw and with the spine so really really useful guide i put the link in the description so you guys can sort of take a peek as well and let's continue. Now, based on what we just saw, I can comfortably go in here and put clavicle, upper arm, lower arm, and hand into one new retarget chain. And again, Unreal Engine is smart enough to, to understand what's going on. Left arm is, in fact, correct. 
So I'm just going to speed up the video. I'm going to do the rest and we're going to go into the next character or Tiz, do the same thing and move on to the next chapter. And I'm going to pretty much repeat the same process. Now keep that in mind because this is not a standard Unreal Engine object. This time you may need to do a little bit of tweaking. For example, I'm going to have spine one, two, three. Remember we had five with Manny. This one we have three. No problems. I'm just going to go new target. This time it's going to predict spine that is correct now with this neck and head and top head you can see the namings are changing really quickly these two I'm gonna assign to the neck so I'm gonna go in here call this one neck add and this top head is going to be my head add so little bit of judgment is needed and rest assured even during your mapping if you realize you made a mistake you can always go back there and say you know what um, all right uh, this bone starts from actually another bone and ends with another bone and you can make those adjustments even during your retargeting so don't panic if you make a mistake you can always undo here but rest assured it has to uh, be reviewed carefully uh, in order to do your retargeting to work. Now we successfully finished mapping uh, our IK rig for the source and for the target. Feel free to go through the list for your own examples and check everything. If you don't want a particular one and made a mistake, you can actually fix it from these two or you can delete and recreate either using a new chain, add new chain or select related bones and create a brand new one. But for now, these two are going to work and let's pair the two using IK Retargeter. So I'm going to go into Characters folder, right click, Animation, Retargeting, and this time I'm going to use IK Retargeter to pair the two. I'm going to call that Manny to Ortiz underscore Retargeter. And of course you can name it anything you want as long as it makes sense if i open it it asks for the source it asks for the target i'm going to expand the two we already know what ik rig we have it's uh, inside the characters folder and once you bring the ik rig it populates the preview mesh you don't need to drag twice per rollout uh, I can actually use the drop down. I can select my item, click on this arrow, or I can drag and drop whatever works for you. All three methods are viable. I'm going to go and select the drop down for Manny, which is our source. I'm going to select Manny IK rig. It populates the preview mesh. I can zoom back and see. For the target, I am going to select 
Ortiz IK rig and it's going to populate the preview mesh. Now I can toggle between source and target and source and target. Very cool. Right now they're on top of each other. I can easily fix that through preview settings. So I'm going to collapse these two. We don't need these two anymore. I'm going to go into preview settings and target mesh offset. I can just move that to the left ever so slightly. Something like 200, maybe 250 will do. Yeah, more or less we are ready. The only thing that we need to be mindful of right before we assign animation is to make sure that the reference pose between the two characters are the same. Right now, it's not. One of them is A pose, one of them is T pose. Uh, you can edit one to match the other. You can edit the source to match the target or you can edit both as long as they look more or less similar. What I always do, I always recommend to create a new default pose. Right now, in, you're in default pose, which is the Unreal Engine default. To approach this non-destructively, because you may want to go back to this later, I'm going to create a new pose. So, um, with the source selected, I'm going to go create new. And I'm going to call that reference pose. I'm going to go OK. Now with the new reference pose selected, I can just go ahead and uh, widen the arms for my source to match the target. I'm going to go into source, select. And there used to be an edit button here in older versions of Unreal. And it took me a while to find where Unreal Engine uh, crew moved that. Um, edit button, it's actually right under showing retarget pose now. So if I click on this um, four dots, we have edit retarget pose and that brings up the rotation gizmo for you to tweak around with. So I'm just going to select the clavicle and the upper arm to widen the arm a little bit. And you don't need to be 100% accurate. You can actually um, do a bit of a ballpark minor error margin is not going to be disastrous so don't be too caught up with values and numbers now the arms are more or less t pose but look at the elbows one of them has a slight bend the other one is straight so you can either select the lower arm for your source and match the target but to be honest with you i really dislike this very unusually straight line even in uh, rigging 101 we actually know that a little bit of angle won't hurt if you have the rig bipedal rig for ik handles so i'm gonna go switch to target i'm gonna select the lower arm and ever so slightly move these guys inward let's see if i move that yeah probably more that should do it so i don't really um i'm not too concerned if it's not 110 percent matching this as long as i see the resemblance that will do and now i can run showing a retarget pose if I click on that on the surface, nothing happens. But now I can go into Asset Browser and pick any animation that I carried over with my source. So I can see I have idle, uh, run, walk, fall, jump, run forward. So let's actually select that. And you can see they both move together. How cool is that? So that's the beauty of retargeting um, completely different rig, but you can see how accurately both characters are behaving. Let's go into walk. Cool. And now we have the new animation for our target and our new Ortiz character. Let's see how we can actually take it out of this uh, retargeter and bring it into sequencer. After all, we are doing this for a reason, so we can use the new animation in our sequencer. So um, let's go to the next one. It's going to be a brief one, how to export 
animation. All right, the easy bit, how to export Ortiz, the running athlete Ortiz. It's actually very simple. We have the button right here. All I need to do is just to go export selected animation. And it says, where do you want to select it? I prefer to select it under my Ortiz folder. I'm going to give that a suffix. I'm going to call that re targeted so we know that uh, this one the animation is going to be retargeted I'm gonna go export and now we have run retargeted inside my content browser if I were to create a, a sequencer so I'm gonna go and create a level sequencer I'm going to create a new folder sequence and call that ls run level sequencer and save i can now go into ortiz and dock the layout bring the retargeter here you can see that there is a thunderbolt here saying that it's a spawnable if i close the sequencer uh, it will be vanished but now I have the character ready to go. I can go ahead and reposition it, uh, rescale it, uh, or what have you. It's um, up to you. You can sort of um, stage your scene and bring it to a right location, change the light if you want to, and take it from there. But let's hypothetically think that, all right, we all set for animation. I'm going to select the retargeted and we are good to go i can go in there and limit my start and end and you can see ortiz is running for his life <laughs> you can see how easy that is to retarget your animation inside unreal engine 5.3 now let's switch to unreal engine 5.4 and explore the differences using what we've just learned in this chapter. Now that we have grasped the fundamental components of retargeting animation in Unreal Engine 5.3, let's explore how we can replicate the workflow in the newer iteration, Unreal Engine 5.4. Retargeting animation in this version adheres to the same principle and welcomes um, a bit of automated steps, significantly streamlining the process of linking the chains when you're applying the IK rig. In Unreal Engine 5.4, there are two approaches to retargeting animation. The first one is an automated process and the second one is to utilize the method we've learned in Unreal Engine 5.3 chapter, enhanced with various improvements. The scene I have is exactly the same scene. The only difference is I'm opening it in Unreal Engine 5.4. We have these two characters. We have the source character, which is the Manny, comes with the animation in a pose. And we have Ortiz, our target character, which is in T-Pose. I'm going to start with the automated workflow. And it's just incredible how fast you can do what you did in the previous chapter. I'm gonna go into Mannequin. I have the mesh and I have the animation. I'm going to go straight into the animation for the first method. I'm going to go into Manny, and these are the animation bits that I have, and I'm going to pick one to retarget and transfer to the Ortiz character. So I believe that's the one that we used in our Unreal Engine 5.3 retargeting, so let's actually pick that. Here's how you do it. You right-click, on the animation and you go all the way to retarget animations and this is going to duplicate the 
animation and retarget it to the skeletal mesh of your choosing. You can see the source has been nominated. I'm going to go in there in the target and pick T pose. And I'm not sure if you have noticed this, but I did not do any tweaking in the Ortiz nor in the Mani. So basically, these guys are now shared the same pose. How crazy is that? So without any tweaking, everything has been identified. Now, the next step is to export retarget assets. Believe it or not, this button creates IK rigs for both characters and a retargeter for final tweaks with one click. So with those two in the source and target, I'm going to go export retarget assets. I'm going to create a new folder, retarget animation five underscore four. And with the new folder selected, I'm going to go export. Now look at that. We have IK auto generated for Manny, IK auto generated for Ortiz, and IK retargeter that links the two so they can share the same animation. How cool is that? If I click on one of them, I'm not sure if you remember, we actually went there and linked each chain and manually put them here, named them at some point, and we had to make sure that it's correct. In here, it's all done for us. It gets even better because with this, IK goals can be specified automatically and it compares the skeleton against known templates to automatically set up a full body IK for feet and hands. If I select and press W on the keyboard, I have IK handle at my disposal. This is incredible. Even for the foot, I can go in there and I have full IK handle. Now, if I go and open the retargeter, you can see this page is now look very familiar thanks to all the bits that we went through in the previous chapter. The only difference is we've got few buttons to deal with. I'm going to go and offset it to 50. We explained that already what that means. They are sharing the same pose, so no tweaking needed at this stage. And all I need to do is to go and run an animation. There is one that they're running forward. So MF walk and run forward. If I go run, they are going to run towards the camera, despite the fact that they're not sharing the same root joint. And that is incredible. Once that's done, you can export selected animation from the same window and place it in the sequencer. And the rest is exactly the same. I'm going to follow what I did in the previous chapters, retargeted, so we can find this animation and bring it into our sequencer. The workflow is going to remain the same, so no changes needed from that side. You can just pretty much follow the steps we covered in 5.3 and bring the animation into level sequencer and integrated with the rest of your scene. So this is the power of retargeting in Unreal Engine 5.4, where with literally a single click of a button, you can create your retargeting. Now, if you remember, I said there are two approaches. And the reason I said that, because although this one is auto-generated, there are some caveats, some areas might look a bit inaccurate. So if you are a bit picky or if the character is in the close up, we are going to switch to the second method, which is kind of similar to what we did with 5.3 with few improvements. Not to worry, you still speed up the workflow significantly. Let's go to the next chapter 
and learn another method to do the exact same thing. Now let's learn another method to retarget animation in Unreal 5.4. To do that, we need to follow the same footsteps that we went over already in 5.3. So I'm going to go into Character, Mannequin, Mesh. I'm going to right click, go to Animation, Retargeting, IK Rig. And that's exactly what we did in the previous chapter. I'm going to call that Manny, IK Rig. I'm going to double click and it asks for what character you would like to create IK Rig for. And we are going to go with Manny Simple. So far, so good. We've already covered that extensively. No problems. Now, here's the magic. Remember, we had to nominate chains and we had to bring them using add new chains, which, by the way, you still can. Well, not anymore. You go to auto create retarget chains. Done. Can you believe this? It's incredible. On top of that, we've learned that we can do auto create IK. So we have IK handle and goals in place. And in the solver pane, we have full body IK ready to go. And believe it or not, that is it. I am going to save. I am going to go to Ortiz folder now and do the exact same thing. Animation, retarget, IK rig, Ortiz underscore IK rig, double click, bring in Ortiz in a T pose and no problem at all. Auto create retargeting chain and auto create IK to create a full body IK for us. Everything is set up. Beautiful. Now we still have the problem of having one in A pose, one in T pose. So let's see what's going to happen if we bring both of them into retargeter. Do we need to go through the exact same changes that we went through already? Or is that going to be an improved workflow? We're about to find out. I'm going to save, go in here, one level up, and let's create our retargeter here this time. I'm going to right click, animation, retargeting, IK retargeter, Manny to Ortiz underscore retargeted. I'm going to double click to open the retargeter. Very similar to the steps that we went through in 5.3. We need to nominate the source. Source is our Manny IK rig and it updates the preview. Target is Ortiz IK rig. It updates the preview and I'm going to zoom back. As expected, they're overlapping. So I need to scroll down, give it a target mesh offset, maybe 250. So we're still loyal to all the values that we used in previous chapters. Now, what we did in 5.3 was running retargeting, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Now, here's the big difference. And the big difference is we have an auto align button. So if I go ahead and create a pose, because I don't want to overwrite the default pose, non-destructive way, remember, and go auto align, while I'm selecting the target, align all bones, it's going to mimic the pose that it sees from the source. It tries its best, right? But it gets even better. Now you can go in there and say, you know what, this thumb, I'm looking at this thumb and I'm looking at this thumb or maybe the index. Uh, we may need to do a little bit of work in there. So can I just select these guys that we've selected already? I don't need to select the end bone. And could you please reference check and look at the source to make sure that I'm getting the right pose? So you can actually narrow down to this level and say, 
Now auto align again, but this time selected using mesh. And you can see it actually tries its best to simulate what it sees or what it receives from the source. I can go ahead, align selected using mesh and go in there, select these guys and repeat the same thing. And you can see we instantly get closer to what we have in our source. That's really good. Also, you may have noticed that the character is ever so slightly in the ground. So again, with the target selected, I can go in there and say, snap character to ground. Boop, done. <laughs> Incredible, uh, I gotta love that. Once it's done, you go and select your animation from the list. In the asset browser, we picked run forward. So I'm going to zoom out ever so slightly, double click, and both characters run. Perhaps I don't need to explain the rest. We went through it a couple of times, export selected, animation. I'm going to pick a folder. I'm going to give it a suffix, such as retargeted. Export and export again. Our level sequencer is ready, so I can easily place it on the level sequencer and bring the characters to life. The rest stays exactly the same. I hope you found this video useful. Use that in your project, whether you use 5.3 or 5.4, I tried my best to give you the quickest and easiest way to retarget your animation inside this amazing application. Thank you for your support and for your love. Make sure to check my Instagram, X and Reddit for all the upcoming projects. And you're welcome to support this channel via Patreon. Have a great rest of your day. Until the next Unreal Engine video, see you guys later.